Hi, we're here at the Craft Collective shop with a live demonstration of some wood turning. And we're gonna have more and more of these. If you're a crafter or a creator, please um, come in and talk to us about coming and doing a demonstration in the shop uh, to help uh, tell people about your craft and show us some of your creations. Okay, my name is Lawrence Moody and I'm giving a demonstration of wood turning. And it's not a secret, anybody can do it with a little bit of tuition. So is this the most difficult bit then, getting started? Yeah. yeah. What's the um, what's the metal bit that you're leaning on? Is it so that's like the, the um, tool rest? The tool rest. Because if you were turning that without yeah. that, you couldn't hold it steady enough; it will bounce around. I know. Too square. Mm -hmm. Then first thing you do is turn it round, mm -hmm. and then you decide what you're going to do. The smaller bowl, bowl gouge. Okay. Which is for the finer work. And if you can see the difference there, oh yeah, between that and that, yeah, it's lots, lot smoother. Yeah. Now I'm going to use this tool, mm -hmm. the different shape. It's a spindle gouge. Oh yeah. Skew chisel. This is for kind of like planing the wood. Okay. But with the chisel. Now this one is a parting tool. Mm -hmm. And that's for making a cut in the wood as wide as that is. It is, it's, it's difficult turning green wood. Yeah. Because once you turn it, you turn it into a bowl, yeah. once it dries right. out, it will split and warm. Yeah. Give you an idea, rough yeah. idea, if it's air dried, yeah. it's a seasoned wood, you've got a six inch log, yeah. white, yeah. it's a year and a day for every inch. Yeah. So you're talking seven, nearly seven years, that's yeah. if you wow. air dry it. With this now, this spindle gouge, just defining the shape of the figure. Mm -hmm. So now I've turned my finger, I'm going to sand it down, get rid of the rough pieces on the wood. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting off with a, a 150 grit. And then going up through the grade, so the higher mm -hmm. grit number, the mm -hmm. finer it is. Okay. So that's the 150, this is the 180. And now a 240 grit, 320, 400, and 600. So now I've opened the grain by using the chisel and the tool on it. So we're going to use this stuff which is sanding sealer mm -hmm. and that will just seal the grain so that it will take, take a polish or whatever we decide to use on it. It's a, a cellulose based kind of acetate type mm -hmm. stuff. Add to the sawdust. So now I can start to take this off by using a parting tool. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of decoration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use it just an ordinary piece of piano uh, picture frame in wire. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, look at that. And that's the friction burning the wood. Yeah, yeah. that's all it is. And the final little bit of 
finishing touches. Red nose and two little eyes. Smiley face. <laughs> and we have little buttons down the front. <laughs> Superb. That's really cool. But feel how smooth that is. I've been turning for about about seven years now. Okay. And I started it as a hobby. Anything I manage to sell helps to pay for the tools and the polishes and the rest of it, so Super. hopefully it's kind of self-funded. I got started by going to a local wood turning club, mm -hmm. which is called the Cornwall Association of Wood Turners, oh, yeah. and they're situated at Wheel Jane Mine, in between Bissau and Chase Water. And the club is open Monday to, to Thursday. And you have to be there before 7 o'clock yeah. because the law of the mind rules are that we, sh we lock the gate at 7. Yeah. But if anybody was interested uh, in coming, you can always pick my number up from the shop here. We turn until about half nine at night. And each night there are two teachers on. They, they will teach you right from the start. It's like most hobbies. Mm. It, it's how, how much you want to spend on it. If you turn up at the club, the first two are free. Then after that, just for insurance purposes, we ask you to become a member of the club, yeah. which is £30 a year and £5 a night to turn. You can buy your wood at the club or you can bring your own. There are 13 lathes at our club, all set out in a, a designated building. Each lathe has the basic five tools on it. Mm -hmm. that you, you will need. You don't need any more, really. Um, a lot of times you'll put something on the lathe and you've got it in your mind what it's going to be like. But the wood will dictate what it wants. Yeah. There's a goblet up in the rack there. Mm. The taller one, that's, in my mind, was going to be like a, a brandy bowl shape. Mm. But... As soon as it got on the lathe, the wood wasn't having it. Really, the only limitation is your imagination. If at all possible, mm -hmm. I like to leave the bark on my wood. Mm. If people are interested in buying your, um, your stuff, the stuff that you make, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Come into this shop. Yeah. Most of my stuff is here um, for sale. If we go back to what I was saying about the competition on a Friday night, mm. normally we would have a guest speaker or somebody doing a demonstration. And it not necessarily has to do with wood turning. We've had talks on metal detecting, um, radio controlled models, um, a, a variety of things, dowsing, everything really. If you're turning wood, you tend not to varnish it because over the years, over a period of time, 
the varnish will crack and then you'd have to strip it right down to the wood again which can be especially for a, a delicate item it would be quite difficult to do yeah. I've made uh, everything I think from a fish trophy mm. to a mortar and pestle to 36 little flying saucers that my daughter wanted so that she could hang them up in sets of three into a mobile. Also, when you're turning, it's that you get a feel for the wood. Um, I've just been turning this piece here, and I wanted to make a round bead similar to this, but it didn't feel right. It didn't look right, and it didn't feel right. So I'm going to alter it now, make it something a little bit different. I don't know what it is. All I can put it down to is the spirit of the wood. Now this is something else. I just said I'd make a round bobble mm. and as I'm turning it, I'm going to make a pear drop shape. Okay. Mm. A bit like that, that kind of shape. Mm. So what I've done is I've turned these middle pieces with this tail stock still in here so that it's holding the wood, it's giving a bit of beef mm. to it. Now I'm coming to the end, I can take that away and turn that off to a point, this piece. Mm -hmm. Then I can leave that because there's no pressure on it. So I can come back and finish this end off. Okay. Also, it's getting a shape that's not only pleasing to you, but to other people. Mm which unfortunately only comes with experience. So I can move that off now. I don't know if you can see that, but as I'm turning it, it's moving. Mm -hmm. The wood is moving itself. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave that. As I said just now, it's knowing when to stop. Mm -hmm. I should have stopped a little bit closer up this end. Mm -hmm. This is the ordinary finishing wax I was telling you about. Uh, you can use beeswax, you know, just basic furniture polish will do it. And then you have a Christmas decoration. Fantastic, yeah. Hang on your Christmas tree. <laughs>